Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen Camille Trent. Today we're going to do a gouache painting tutorial of roses. People have been asking me about gouache, so I decided to do a gouache tutorial for you today. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I go over all my supplies and everything I'm doing. And let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to go over my supplies for this tutorial. Today, I have a different paper for you guys. Um, I've had this paper sitting around and it's really good for gouache. It's not great for watercolor in my opinion, even though it says it's watercolor paper. It's a hot press. It's a Fabriano Studio watercolor pad. Um, I got this at Hobby Lobby. It was like $10, it was pretty cheap. And it's 25% cotton. Um, this is a nine by 12. It has a smooth surface to it. So it works well. I mean, you can use gouache in any surface, but I like this surface. Um, to do this tutorial with. I've got my paper towel, I have my gouache paints here. I'll be using some of this leaf green. I use Holbein gouache. I've mentioned this many times. It's my favorite gouache. Um, it's not cheap. So if you're starting out, use something cheaper. I do use cheaper white because it's, you know, you just go through a lot of it and it's expensive. So I bought this um, Della Rowney uh, designer gouache white. Um, this is permanent, permanent white. But I have some um, lemon yellow, I have leaf green, ultramarine deep, cadmium green deep, brilliant orange. My favorite from Holbein is rose. Look at that bright pink you get. Um, I don't know if I'll be using this, but I put this on my palette anyway. Uh, the cobalt turquoise. I already had some dark green on here before and some brown. I think I, I, think I mixed the brown with the black, whatnot. So I'll be using some of the, the leaf green mixed in with some of the dark green I have, which is the cadmium green deep, probably with the little brown that I already had on my palette. I've got the rose. I mixed in with some white and a little bit of orange to make this like blushy pink color. So how are you working with the gouache is many ways. You can water it down like watercolor, which I wouldn't suggest on this paper because this paper, even though it says watercolor paper, it's not going to have the same look as um, a, you know, an artist paper. And it's opaque, so it's kind of like an acrylic. So we're going to paint roses today, kind of how I would paint maybe acrylic, not quite, um, but somewhat. Because acrylic, you know, I can, I can constantly paint paint on top of paint. And, it, you know, it's, it's not going to see through as much. So for these roses, I've mixed up some of this opera, I mean opera, pink, like I said, with some white over here and a little bit of that orange. But I'm going to start off with a really pale color first. So the same color and I've mixed with white again. So it's really pale. See that? It's pretty pale. And I'm using my Grumbacker number 10 Golden Edge Round Brush. Excuse my fingers. I've got paint everywhere today. Anyway, I'm a spaz. I'm sorry, people. So it's kind of like a creamy consistency. You want it wet, um, not super wet, but you want it wet enough so you can manipulate the paint. Otherwise, it's really stiff. So we're just going to do the simple strokes. Um, you're going to push down. See that? Like a half, like a half curve. It's like a half moon, like a curve. Leave a little white and do these little pushing, just like how you've done roses for watercolor, leaving spaces, making these strokes going around here, leaving white, you see that? That'll be one rose. We'll do another one down here. Again, a curved line, then curve it over here and keep curving the lines, but leaving spaces in between. You can touch some other spaces. You see, I'm zooming in. So you're pushing down, you're touching it there, but then leaving a space here. You see that? And you're pushing down and leaving these spaces. You do the same thing in watercolor also if you want to. There's different ways to paint roses in watercolor. I have some pretty popular watercolor tutorials on my page. Again, with this. Now see, this is not, uh, it's a typical, gouache. It's kind of gotten translucent because I have more water in it. If I have less water, see now I'm going to get way more white. It's going to be much thicker, the paint. 
Oh, I don't want this pink. Less water. It's going to be more opaque. So we're going to go here again. You see the difference? It's starting to be look more opaque. This one is not as opaque. The same movement. I'm going to do another one here. I'm just doing a bunch of roses. This one I actually, up top here you see, I pushed in the paint more so it's less white you're seeing through. So this one's kind of translucent. I can go right back over this because it's gouache. I mean you could put, technically go back over if it was watercolor because I want to give you that opaque rose. There's a lot of people in my business that do gouache. Um, some great ones on Instagram would be um, August Wren. She's gouache queen. Um, Carolyn Gavin. Okay, so then um, put another one up here. Again, the pale. So now we're going to do a different tone color. We're going to add a little more pink to the white, like I told you here. So it's a medium tone. You want your light, medium, and dark. I'm going to add a little more of this bright rose. And this should dry fairly quickly. And if it doesn't, and it dries, you just paint on top of it, and it kind of like looks a little messy. I kind of like that too. It's a different look. You don't want it so rigid and straightforward. That's why you know it has that loose look if you're painting on top of it, painting on top of it, it's not dry yet. So then I'm taking that medium color and I'm now going to wisp it sporadically around on top of that. Still leaving that white going on top of those leaves. This is kind of how I do my acrylic roses. I have a tutorial on that if you haven't, if you're interested in, in acrylic. So this is the medium tone. We're just building out these simple roses. And I like this brush because it has a nice big belly, a smaller tip, so you're getting more rounded strokes. It's good to have a, a rounded, fatter brush like this, a long one like the, the Velvet uh, Touch number 8 long round. When you want to do skinnier, pointier strokes. So again, here we go, we're just pushing that medium color around sporadically like we did with the first one and on top of it. Which is so simple. The trick with gouache is, you know, you get to mix many colors sometimes. See, now that's still wet, so I'm going to grab some of this paint, a little bit of that orange. And going over that, making a bigger leaf here, and a curve one here. You can do many colors inside these roses. You can have highlights of like a blue. We're trying to keep it easy. So then we're going to grab that bright um, rose. It has a little white in here with my brush, so it's making it a little, a little pale than I would have done, but we can do four or five tiers of colors. And then again, you're throwing that in there. You get this bright rose. Just keep moving that paint around. Now, if it's too bright for you, you don't like it that bright, you can just tone it down. I mean, I'm sure you can mix a color and tone it down the color you want. But today's tutorial, we're just showing you how to mix that bright color in with different tones. You can have just a subtle, not too much of this particular color in it.
and still go back in and mix more colors to that. I can take some of this orange that I have. This is a brilliant orange. See that? Mix some of that pink in there. It's kind of like a red now. Grab some of that white. Just throw a little bit of that in there too. Or if you just want the bright orange in there too. You're just punching it up. What I mean by what I mean by punching it up, you just you're making that color stand out more. By throwing another color in there. Alright, so we're gonna move on to some greenery. So I have that leaf green here, which is nice and bright. I've mixed it in, I had some already had brown in here. I've mixed in some of this brown and some darker green, just to tone it down a bit. Um, it's a little wet right now, so I'm going to try and get some more paint in here. And make it more opaque. I've got some of this dark green mixed with black up here that I'm throwing in here. Just to take away that super brightness. The leaves. Pushing down, pulling in. Simple. From here, just look at that. This big belly brush just does it for you. Just pushing down and pulling it like that. Real simple. You can have that little under part of the rose to the stem. Put the leaf in over here. So basically you're just pushing down, kind of meeting it again on the other side. It's really simple when you have a big belly brush like this. Now, so, like I said, it's not opaque as much as it would be because it's a little wet. If you add more paint to it, it's going to be more opaque. I'm going to put some of this stems going down. some leaves up the stems and I'm actually going to put in some darker tones too because I feel like it's a little too bright. Really simple roses. We're going to get a little funky now. We're going to add this dark green up here. So I'm going to go put that green tone in there and see how I just move it around. Putting it on top of that green that we just painted. getting in a darker tone and then putting in some dark green like vines sneaking outward. See it has a nice tip to it so you can do all this little skinny lines with the vines. Once you have the vines you can do some leaves connected to it. Just by pushing down on your brush. Grab this paint again. See, I'm just adding the dark green element on top of the other green we had. You can put in the veins of the leaves with this dark green. See, like that. Or don't. Whatever. Put some of this dark green under the rose, on the stem. So we're adding multi layered colors here with the greenery. You always want to do that. So it doesn't look flat. So just keep adding some of these funky little wisping greenery. I always kind of like to do that in my paintings. I always feel like I, I think I just gravitate towards painting things that make look like it's moving. So up here, I'm gonna add some more of this vinery. And I'll be adding some flowers to that. So you're just making it have more movement to it. You clean off the brush, go back and grab your pink again. Probably the brighter pink and I'll tone it down over here. See I mix that bright pink in more with that orange and have a nice corally kind of pink. And then we can put some little buds up here. And over in 
here. Just a simple push of your brush down. See that? If you can't see that, I'm sorry. <laughs> you just push the brush down. See that? I'm just pushing it down. I'll show you over here. Pushing it down. And you have a bud. That's why these big fat brushes are great. Sorry, you missed it up here. But basically, you get that idea. So it's a different tone flower. Uh, flower. It's just a simple buds like that. You could make one a little more open. But we're just going to put another one down here. Balance it out. And then I'm going to put in some bright colored leaves up in here. It's just constant like looking around saying, oh, I want some more greenery in here. Adding some greenery next to the buds. You see the buds? Pull it down so you can see it. Put in some of the bright greenery. Just make these wispy lines. See, I'm just wisping it out. That's how you make it look fun and wild. Um, for the center of the roses, you don't have to do anything, but I might want to put in this a little deep yellow. I have a, I ha the only yellow I have right now is this lemon yellow, so I have to tone it down. I'll add a little brown to it, maybe a little orange to make it a deeper, darker yellow. And you can go in and put the yellow centers in of your roses. Just dabbing that in. And then on the back of that, grab some of this brown. This is a little greenish brown. I'm going to have to change it up. You know, you make brown from red and green. So you have it orange, you don't have red. You can do orange and green. And you just do some dabs of that color in here next to the yellow. It's a little wet, it's not cooperating, but the yellow's wet, not the brown. Just gonna dab that in there. You could even take I have this deep blue here. It's ultramarine deep. You can throw in a little blue. Doesn't have to be black or brown. And I take that blue and I'll add it to some of the greens too. You always see me add indigo to my hooker's green. I'll add some of that blue so I get that real deep dark color in here. See, I'm just pushing it around, just these little strokes. Not that fancy. You'll get used to it after a while. I think the looser you get, the more exciting it comes out. I still feel like it's, it's not quite done yet. Like it needs something else. And I think it's the rose. So I'm adding the details. So a little darker on the vine over here. Down here. Just play around with that. Maybe add some more of those bright green leaves coming out here. That's getting pretty wild. I feel like maybe that pink got a little too crazy, right? What do you think? Or it's not deep enough. So I'm going to tone it down. I'm going to put that corally pink. So you have that bright pink. I'm going to add some of that white. A little bit of this orange. And let's go back over that. Again, just kind of like on one side of the rose. Or if you don't like the bright pink that I did, you can just go over all of it. But I'm going to add just a little bit on the, each side. 
just on this side, one side. A little bit over here too, just a little bit. Again, you can go back in and take your white. See what's great about gouache, you can get that pale pink again. If you didn't like that, you can go right back on top of that. That's what you can do with gouache that you can't do with um, watercolor. You can put a light color on top of a dark color. If I want it even paler, like I said, grab the white, put it in there. Get it really pale. See, I can go right back over that. Just keep playing around to get the color that you're looking for. Got a little muddy here with that blue in there, but that's okay. You can work with it. See, gouache is a lot of fun. And a little pink, light pink into this bud. A little highlight. You can add a little just pale pink just all around too. I'm an intuitive painter. Um, what that means is that I don't always have a plan. I kind of just go with my intuition, my how I feel when I'm painting. See, I'm just putting these strokes down like this as I go. Some people map things out. Um, that's great for them. It's not how I paint. See that? And you achieve this. And you can still keep adding more white. Like I said, here's the white. Go right on top of that. Look at that. Watch, I'm going to take it really white. See that? Now it's feeling more like a uh, acrylic. Just going right on top of that with the white. Green was still wet. Still playing around with that. Notice how I'm doing it kind of only on one side. It's kind of like the light coming this way. Just throwing in some white. Just lightening that up. And it's a little thick, but that's okay. You can do that. So I really got. I really hope you guys enjoy this. See, that's just really simple. And it didn't take that long, right? One brush, a few colors. You want to throw in some other colors in here? Go right ahead. Um, like I said, you can do a little highlight on the buds with the white. You don't have to do that. Just kind of fun. Play around with the greenery. Can add some really bright yellowy green. I just like to play around with a lot of stuff. The move, more movement, the better for me. <laughs> it's just the way I roll. And the more different colors of greenery and pink, the better. But that didn't take long, though, did it? And that's a beautiful thing to give to your friend or for yourself in your house, whoever. It's a nice tutorial on using gouache. gouache like I said, for me, I like to paint it, paint it on flat paper. This is the Fabriano. It's very inexpensive. It's nine by 12. It's, what did I pay, $10 a high lobby? Probably not even that, because you can use a coupon. Anyway, so there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know when my tutorial is up. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And Look for my um, video coming soon about my membership channel on, on this uh, YouTube channel. So I hope you enjoy your day. Take care, guys. Stay safe, and I'll speak to you soon. Don't forget, uh, if you have any comments, leave in the 